The fundamental question is how does the brain encode information? How does our brain do this magical thing of forming thoughts? Whether it be simple stuff like moving your hand or more complex stuff like words that you say or where you pay attention. When the brain is injured, when it can't create that information anymore, how can we fix that? Everyone knows someone affected by stroke. It is so highly prevalent. If you've injured a part of the brain because of a stroke or a trauma, the brain, it has to reform new connections. And the way that it does it is by facilitating things so that they happen at the same time. Eric Luthart is an expert in the field of brain-computer interface devices. Dr. Luthart and his colleagues are testing a stroke glove called an Ipsy hand. Patients wear a cap with sensors connected to a computer. It's a non-invasive headset that records signals from the brain, and it uses uninjured parts of the brain to control his paralyzed hand. We discovered that information was not lost in the setting of stroke, and it was in other places in the brain. And that if we can connect to those other places in the brain with a brain-computer interface, now we have the opportunity to return that function. Brain-computer interface is an incredible science addressing what is clearly an enormous need in, in stroke with clinical evidence that there was a mechanism of action that was working in patients. All I really wanted to do was to be able to hold her hand. At the very beginning, was to hold her hand. It was featured on the cover of Stroke, and 70% of the patients also had a significant improvement like Rick. It's all working, it's just falling into place the way you want it to be. What exactly is it that makes us human? It's, it's been a question that has really captivated me my entire life, you know, and that's part of the reason that I studied both biology and theology as an undergraduate. And I think it's this combination of elements, whether it's our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our memories, and fundamentally, our relationships with other human beings that really are kind of what you know, define us as human beings. Depression is a major issue that's affecting kind of, you know, almost everyone. How do we reset the brain so that the, the mind is healthier? And that's what led to kind of my center working on some of the technology that led to the company called Equility. And here's what the system looks like. It looks like a Bluetooth earpiece. And those gold discs that you see are the electrodes that can stimulate the nerve. We're at these very, very early stages of what's possible. Right now, we're just starting to see some brain-computer interfaces that can help people with stroke or technology that can potentially help people with uh, depression. But I think we're on this exponential curve where we're gonna see dramatic transitions of how we engage with our nervous system that can be really, really alter the fabric of our human experience. He is a truly innovative thinker. He's an artist, he's a writer, he's an inventor, he's a physician, he's a scientist. He has a fantastic vision for how they all come together. And a lot of it's to bring science forward to the community. And I really enjoy getting the message out for things that excite me. And that's led me to kind of really some fun and interesting places to really kind of communicate those messages. How do we artificially create kind of an intelligent, artificial, in silico you know, ability to manage information and perhaps mimic or even perhaps achieve yeah, reverse en reverse engineering? That's right, and I think you're going to see networks. Th these happening in parallel. And eventually, right. there's going to be a synergy there. And whether it be writing my fiction novels, such as uh, Red Double Four and Limbo, writing plays such as Brainworks, but sometimes one of the most fundamental ways that you can figure out whether your surgery is having an impact or not is to actually have them awake so that you can engage with them. So for instance, with speech, the best way to know if your surgery is gonna affect their ability to talk is to talk to them. Visiting places like high schools locally and really kind of talking about this stuff and seeing them exciting, seeing them and get engaged. Do you think that we'd be considered more human or less human with all these attachments? The pace of social and technical change is moving faster than our, our society's tools to deal with them. If we can really unlock the full potential of our human intellect, you know, whether it be in the form of neurotechnology or in a more general sense, if we can unlock somebody else's true potential and their ability to kind of find a passion and grow with that, that makes the world a better place.